what were your musical abilities before joining the academy okay so my musical abilities before i joined the academy was i was just writing my own music recording myself and um mixing my own vocals slash vocal stems when i was able to obtain them from producers that i was buying beats from or whatever just mixing in general mixing recording myself and writing music that's about it in hindsight you know I, I realized that learning to mix definitely gave me an advantage in when I learned to produce from your program. It really did help out a lot, but I didn't come in with that ability. I didn't know how to structure songs. I didn't know how where to find sounds. I didn't know how to even implement the sounds into my the software I was using. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just those three, just mixing, writing, and uh, recording. Yeah, mixing. So writing, recording, and you were getting beats. I remember you used to buy beats off the internet, like off Beat Stars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, I've had like producers in the past, um, and they're great, to be honest with you. You know, but like as great producers as they are, and as good friends as they were to me, or they are to me, um, you know, I'm working on their time. I'm working on their schedule. And, you know, producers, they got their, you know, everybody's got their own path in life and I'm not one to get upset or to, you know, uh, fault anyone for the path they're taking. And if they're not getting things to me fast enough or whatever, it's like, you know, and yeah, I'll pay for beats or whatever, but it's just like, even when you're paying for something, it's like people still live their own life and they're still going to do things in their own time. And that's when I was like, you know what? I'm already doing a lot and I already have a lot of skills, but this one crucial skill I have, which is producing beats and then also mastering um, music, mm-hmm. uh, which I was paying for too. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, this is really like a crucial skill that like, I'm gonna need if, I, if I'm gonna push forward to do this, if I'm gonna make this a business because I'm not gonna have to worry about uh licensing or copyright right. strikes things of that nature and like i could just i could just take the next level into artistry of who i am as an artist and at the time i was going through a pretty big shift you know i was just really debating just leaving the current job that i was in which was real estate yeah and you know it's scary to just kind of leave what's bringing in you know bringing in the bacon at the <laughs> moment yeah you know and like kind of just bet all chips on yourself you know especially if like it's just scary man you know so so at the time when you when i stumbled upon you i believe it was you just came up on my timeline or my my news feed on instagram and uh, might have liked your thing i don't know if i left a comment or follow- liked it Oh, followed. Oh, we followed you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you followed yeah. us. You followed yeah. you, you and your brother have the accounts yet, but yeah, you guys followed me. And then I, when I, when I saw, I'll never forget how I linked up. I mean, I link up with everybody pretty much the same, but with you guys, it was different. I'll never forget it because when I saw you guys, I was like, you had about four K followers. You, it was like, okay, twin break dancers that also rap, <laughs> and are in new york and i like saw you guys and i was like these guys are fucking dope and i was just like beyond even trying to get them into the academy i just want to say what's up so when i hit you up i wasn't even trying to do anything i was like dude i just want to link up so i sent you an audio message yeah which i appreciate. that which i never usually do that and so oh, wow. yeah usually i just i'm like hey what's up how's music going and for you guys I was like no i'm gonna send them an audio because i really want them to respond but so what then was going on with music for you that made you want to just at least book the call with me first what's going on with music uh at the time uh it was less about what was going on with music and more what was going on with life and how that was affecting my music you okay know? i didn't so know like, that talk about that yeah so it's just like you know i'm over here man that was a crazy ass year for me bro i'm not gonna lie mm-hmm. um you know i was doing real estate in the morning all the way to the afternoon. And then a lot of the days, 
Right afterwards, I'm going to teach breaking classes because I have my own breaking business. And then after after real estate in the morning to the afternoon to breaking from the middle of the afternoon to the early evening, it's like I'm going home to work on music. And it's like, man, by that time I'm like tired. I feel a little defeated, you know, going in, my energy levels are low. And I'm just like, man, this is not sustainable. I'm like, yo, if I'm trying to be a serious artist, there's no way that there's no way that I'm going to do this and stand out amongst the hundreds of thousands, millions of people doing this if I stay on this route, you know? And I was kind of going through like a a phase where I was like, damn, like, you know, and then the doubt starts to kick in. Is this really for me? Can I make it? This, that, blah, 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 all this other stuff, man, you know? And like, you might not think of it because like, you know, at, at the time, our social media is super consistent. We're pumping out content like crazy. And, you know, we try our best to make the most quality we can, you know, but it's just like, you know, I'm doing it all and it looks official. It looks great. But then it's like, you're not getting the return that you want, you know? And then on top of all that other stuff, plus I got a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? And you know, how you know how that is, man. When you're in a serious relationship, you got to nurture that too. So yeah. it's like, so bro, last year bro was serious bro and i wasn't about to dump that on you in the first call that i got on with you because i was like all right man let me just hear this guy out you know he's <laughs> coming at me he's being professional and th at the end of the day like this is his business so i want to hear what he's proposing and i wanted to be professional on my end too and it wouldn't have been very professional of me to like make our first session therapy session right so <laughs> okay interesting you know so yeah. so i kind of took what you like stumbling upon you as like a sign from the universe or God or whoever you believe in. Right. And I just took it as a sign. I was like, all right, I get it. God, you know, like, plus I had booked a, an, a trip to Puerto Rico for a month. Cause yep. I'm like, all right, man, if, if I don't like, if I can't come, if I can't go to my motherland and come back with an, it for a month, and then come back with some sort of answers, man, then there is something completely wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I was like, man, this is this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the motherland. I'm gonna get in touch with my with my roots. I'm gonna find out what it really means to be Puerto Rican. I'm going to set aside all my responsibilities and just focus on being an artist, whatever that means. You know, make music, link up with other people, make music, uh, shoot content, and just kind of you know, enjoy life and kind of experience life because as artists, I feel like our music is just manifested through our life experience. So I was like, what better life experience than to to get become one with with my roots, you know, which I haven't really taken the time to do up until that month. So, okay. you know, you came in right before literally I was about to leave on that trip. So I took you know, the fact that I was going on this trip, the fact that I had all these conflicting thoughts and then getting on that call with you, I took it as a sign. And at the time it's like, you know, I was doing real estate. So like, you know, the bank account was pretty fair and I could afford it. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? Like, I've never been one to shy away from betting on myself. You know, it's just that year, so much pressure and so many things were built up on top of each other that I felt like for the first time in a long time, I started to doubt myself. And then when I had that call with you combined with everything else I told you, it was like, all right, this is a sign. I'm gonna just fucking do this because it's an investment into myself. I've always bet on myself. And when I've given myself the time and effort that I know I deserve, it's always paid off for me some way, somehow in the end, you know, or somewhere down the line. So I kind of just took it like, all right, I'm going to bet on myself. Um, you know, I did background check you. I listened to your songs, you know, and I was like, <laughs> background you know, check. That's and, funny. Like, and like, like I wasn't really listening for like, if I liked the song or not, although I will say that I do like your music, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, thank and you. Um, I did like the songs that I heard and, um, I was more listening for like the production, the quality of the production, things like that. Cause that's what I was making my decision based on, you yeah. know what I mean? So I was like, okay, is this guy that like, he's telling me he's going to be able to help me uh, produce beats, mix beats, 
make things sound better, master things. I need to hear his stuff and how his stuff sounds. That would just be the best indicator for me. You know, and right. I even played it. Right. I even played your stuff for like my brother, for my roommate, and they were like, "Yo, this is like, you know, this is good mixing, solid mixing. You know, uh, it sounds good. It sounds full. You know, uh, and they like the songs too. They were like, "Yeah, man. You know." So they were like, "So after that, I was like, all right. So he's not bullshitting because his stuff definitely was done by someone who knows what they're doing. Whether at the time I didn't know if, if you did it or not. Now I do know that you did." You pretty yeah. much do most of it. You know what I mean? 99% of the songs is me. Exactly. So I was just like, the point is, if this is the sound he's telling me I can produce after being in his program, then I'm going to couple that with the belief that I have in myself and my own creative process. And I'm just like, okay, if we take this and we add this, it'll equal something great. You know? And then even at the time, I was like, yo, man, I'm about to go to Puerto Rico. And you were like, yo, man, just, you know, do your best to keep up with the program. You know, you might you might fall behind in the first month because I understand you're going on it and you're letting me know you have a commitment. But then there's still two more months of the three months that you said I would learn how to do this. He go, and then, you know, and, and sure enough, in Puerto Rico, I made some really uh, just even on the island, I made aside from all the experiences I had there, I made some really great strides with, with you. Uh, we had great meetings, you yep. know, some memorable meetings. I mean, what, what meeting isn't memorable when you're on a tropical Island. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and now, uh, the first Foley mix produced mastered song that I currently have. The first one is on a beat that, you you said that I should pursue back when we were in Puerto Rico. So I remember. You know, so it's like, as I said, you know, um, I knew that in due time it would produce a result that was worth it if I just, you know, took it serious and believed in myself. And that's what I've been doing. And now I'm super happy making beats. And now I'm like, yo, man, like, how far can we take this? You know what I mean? I, I, I see people like Kendrick and things they do and uh, other artists I like. And I'm just like, man, like, they get so creative with their production and they get so creative with how they do things. And sometimes they bend and break lines. It's like now I'm like, I feel like Neo in the Matrix. You know what I mean? I can see the numbers falling and stuff. I can see the code in the Matrix. And I'm like, man, I'm going to manipulate the crap out of all this to however I want it to be because I'm the one, you know? Sure. Yeah, that's fucking dope. I, fuck, I love hearing that. And I, I remember that first call. Like, you were uh, you were at a coffee shop, but you were outdoors, and it was like on the sidewalk. So I remember like the street. That was our first, the first one. We, there was like the street in the background. So I got to see a little Puerto Rico. And then I remember another call. You were at a coffee shop out the back. Yeah, yeah, it's two calls, deck. two calls. Yeah, yeah, back patio vibes, whatever it was. But yeah, you literally told me that was a kind of like one of the things where you were like, Hey man, I'm leaving in seven days for a month. Is that a problem? I'm like, no, not really. Like if you need to take longer than three months, take four months, I'm here. And if you know, you can still do shit while you're out there, which you did. And, and so since joining, like, obviously now you can do it all. You produce instrumentals, you record what you are already doing, you're mixing and mastering. But I know that like, dude, when you get on the group calls, you always seem to talk about like, even though you were mixing before, You've talked about, which I, I was not expecting you to get much out of the mixing. So I'm like, well, he already mixes. So maybe you had the, the, I don't know, the know-it-all attitude or something, but yeah. you've talked a lot about how the programs helped you with your mixing. Can you just like talk, touch on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, you acknowledging that. And um, yeah, man, you know, I like, you know, as you had mentioned in one of the last calls, like I really feel like I'm a student to the game, you know, I'm a student, not only to the game, but I'm a student to this culture, which I, you know, the culture that I believe I'm a part of, which is the hip hop culture. That's the music, the genre in which I primarily make music in. And, you know, as some of you, if you're watching this, don't know by now, um, you know, before I even started making music, you know, I'm a professional b-boy breakdancer for like 17 years now 
Wow, that's long when I say it out loud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel you, bro. So 17 years. But yo, look at us, man. We still look we look great. We look bro. Fantastic, bro. We are only in our 30s, bro. Like that that's ain't crazy, old. Man. Yeah, no. yeah, we are. But man, we we you know we could be mistaken for our 20s, I think. You know? Um hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. So so Funny. you know, uh I was doing that. I've been doing that, I still do that. It's it's like my first love. It's what keeps me, you know, hungry and fit. And it's a great stress reliever for, you know, my life sure. right now, which is, you know, everyone's life. Is good. Everyone has their own stresses, right? Um, but um, but yes, yeah, so I was already in the culture. Um and uh so I'm always a student to the game, you know, I'm always learning and you know, especially when it comes to mixing and stuff like that. Like I'm I am self-taught with mixing, you know. Um, okay. I went to the Academy of YouTube, which I know you talk a lot about, you yeah. know, and there's no, there's no disrespect on the Academy of YouTube, but the different, the difference of the Academy on YouTube and what you provide is that you cut out all of the nonsense videos that you have to sift through. And right. then you give the people what they need to succeed literally, you know, and YouTube is great, but if you're going to go that route, you're just going to take way longer to learn everything everything that's it you know what i mean it's not impossible but if you want to take a couple like years as opposed to three months then that's on you you know what i mean all right that's really your decision you know uh but uh, uh as i said um when i came in after i started coming to the group calls i just started to notice and it's something that i i didn't really notice before i knew it but i didn't notice it it's like other producers they just have their own other people who mix engineers, producers, they just have their own way of doing things. Right. right. And, and when you're the only one mixing your stuff and you're not really sharing with other people and you're not part of a community, you're not exposed to that. Right. Mm. So, so not only am I exposed to how you're doing things, but then you got Corey Wallace, who's like super producer engineer extraordinaire, you know, yeah. this guy, you know, more than 10 million streams, uh, you know, literally makes beats all day every day he's he's like he's literally an engineer music sonic nerd and i mean that in the most like positive like complimentary way possible because i want to be on his nerd level of that you know what i mean right. like i want i want to be able to like just break things down structurally from the smallest little thing and be able to hear something and to a certain degree i could i can listen to certain things and know what's going on but like he he really has it to a high level you know and i'm one i'm not one to like not admit when someone's better than me at something you know what i mean like he's way better than me at mix straight up <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like i'm just like wow let me look at what this guy's doing like maybe he's got something i can learn from and what's cool is i came in with a foundation so when i get to when we get into those group calls I have fun, don't get me wrong, showing you tricks that I know. It's fun to sh put people on to things that maybe they didn't do the way you did it. But it's been awesome to see people like you and Corey and how you do things because of my prior mixing experience, I'm able to really like understand what you're doing and pick it up super fast. Sure. So, and literally you guys can show me something and I believe like I could use it successfully like right after the call. Like I can understand, you know what I mean? So for me, I'm like, okay, let's, let's take advantage of this community here because like, yeah, I got the course, right? And at first it was all about the course, but once you get through the course, you know, uh, I started to really see the value in the community, you know? Cause it's like, okay, there's a bunch of other people here who are trying to do what I'm doing. So I'm bound to run into somebody who can teach me something, show me something and on a, on a technical mixing level mastering level that's definitely been the case you know you guys put me on to not only techniques of mixing but you put me on to new plugins Corey's dropping in like yo man this one's free get it but it's only free till next week so get it now you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it's like i like black Whoa, friday shit. call was sick when we like he just literally blasted us with like 30 black friday deals and i was like oh yeah, shit i went yeah, yeah, i caught man. some and, stuff you know, off I, that. Yeah. I got on right after that call i bought fab filter eq oh wow Pressure pro q3 I've been using that since the call, bro. Oh, I fucking love Pro Q. Yeah. yeah, that's a crazy and, one. And bro, that's such a good one. And and I've been using, you know what, the Xbox. Oh. Bro, I've been no, using just it. No, 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 that no, one's like, crazy. But yo, I don't use it as a one as a one plug and fit all. Honestly, I just selectively use parts of it within what I'm already doing. And I use it 
as a base recording template thing because it's good for that, I believe too. Yeah, totally. So, but it does have its it does have its weaknesses that it does have weaknesses in a sense. It's not as customizable as just knowing how to mix with single plugins. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a big reason I don't introduce it to people because of that exact reason. Okay. And so, and I agree with you. I mean, I agree with you on the community thing. Like when I was producing myself or like when I was trying to learn it off YouTube, like that, I didn't even know that that was something missing was other people to bounce ideas off of. And, and it's dope. I think now to, for me to see the evolution of the program, because before you came in, you know, it was what it was. And now that you're in it and like you're deep in it and you're so deeply rooted, you bring so much value to new people, like new people who come on. I'm like, you don't know. I, I almost want to say it to be like, you don't even know that you're missing out on Anthony Pacheco. Like if you don't join this, you're going to miss out on a guy like that in your community or Corey or me or Ryan B or um, whoever. And What's been really cool now too is seeing the collabs going on. Like you and I are going to have one. Have you heard? You haven't heard me and Ryan B's collab. No, I only heard this the Instagram story snip. But I talked to Ryan B last night, and and he was, he's like, yeah, that one's good. Like I have a song with Ryan B. I got a song with Carlos that you're also going to be on. I have a song with Austin B. I mixed and mastered, produced a song for Jaden. We're starting to like collab really heavy right now, which is cool. So the community aspect's been big for you. Uh, what else has been a big value? Like what on maybe more of a technical logistical side of like your production process, what's been, what's been a big thing you've seen? Um, just being, uh, I think being updated on like all the like newest software, what's available out there. It's just made my mixing process so much easier. Sure. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay. There's easier ways to do this than I've been doing it. Or there's plugins that just like produce magic that I, I you know, that are uh, a part of the waves pack that we're all required to get. There's so many waves plugins, bro. Like it's ridiculous. Like that's all. Literally, you just need waves, monthly subscription, and you don't need anything else really. Realistically, everything else is just to taste. It's like, oh, I like this one better, right? But like. You don't really need anything else. And Waves, there's just so many high quality plugins. Plus, I already came in mixing on just Waves, crack version. But now, now, now I'm legit. <laughs> now I'm legit. You know what I'm Good saying? Good for you. Good for but, you. Um, but like, you know. Yeah, and you know what's funny too, bro? Like when you're on the internet searching for shit like you and I used to be, you know, it's like <clears throat> you get so many different ideas and so many different things. And so many. One thing I remember was people would give like they'd show plugins. They'd be like, I use this plugin. Mm. Right. Or like, I remember I used to watch uh, Devon Terrell mix. Right. And I, I like his videos a lot. His videos but, are incredible. Yeah. But as a beginner, my problem was like, well, what's our base? He's like, yeah, our base. And I'm like, okay, I need to go get our base. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what it did. He would just mm -hmm. show you what he was doing. He wasn't actually like, to me, he wasn't fully breaking it down for beginners. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you join this program, it's like, dude, get these plugins. We're not only get these plugins, but I'm going to also show you like how to set each plugin up, how to understand each plugin and how to make it your own at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing I've noticed you do is you've done a really good job of taking stuff you knew before the program, taking stuff you've learned in the program and combining the information. How do you agree with that? I agree. I agree. Um, I've definitely been doing that a lot lately because what I was able to achieve <clears throat> before the program is understanding conceptually what everything does right okay because at the end of the day it's like you just need an understanding of the concept that's the most important thing i think that people tend to overlook they're just like how do i operate this thing i'm like yo chill out in due time you right. will understand and learn how to operate you'll understand what the knobs do you'll understand what the buttons do right but what's more important is your understanding of the concept of what's happening here when you when you do this what what is compression what is what does it mean to eq something you know what i mean what do the lower frequencies on eq sound like in comparison to the higher frequencies you know what i mean sure. what is uh reverb why do people use it you know what i mean why why do people use delays you know what i mean and you know for anyone who's curious out there it's a lot more than just to hear a cool echo effect at the end of every verse you know what i mean on some travis scott ish you know sure. what i mean sure people use delays for that but people don't understand that 
every vocal you've ever heard in like the history of vocals has all of these elements in it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so it's like, because I knew the concepts, when I'm introduced to new things in the program, I'm able to put the pieces of the puzzle together quickly and I'm able to get creative with what I already knew. You know what I mean? Conceptually, I understand how these things work. So I don't need much time to decipher when Corey's telling me, oh, I use this for more saturation or I use this as a, uh, I use this as a reverb and I do this when I said it because, you know, it gives me a, a bigger sound or a more, a, a, a more a hollow sound or a more dome like sound, you know, or let's use, let's use EQ terminology, a more chamber sound, a more church sound. You know what I mean? I'm like, I know what these things mean already. You know what I mean? So when Corey's talking to me, it's like, I'm registering the information so quickly because of my previous knowledge, but he's showing me how to do it in a different way. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, oh, okay, so if this is going to give me a more church sound, and I already know how to make this guy, I already know how to make my vocal have a like a deep guy, like southern voice, like we know when you p bring the pitch down. I was like, if I combine Corey's technique with the technique I already know, I might just create some intergalactic out of space vocal right now. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's like, that's kind of what's happening there, you know? And that's just a testament to just equipping yourself with knowledge, man. You know, the more knowledge you have, the more you can break the chains of ignorance, you know? Yeah, totally. I agree with that. And so in the course of the, uh, I don't know exactly how long you've been in the program, but like, what have you, how many beats have you made? If you can, if you have a count, how many beats have you made? How many songs have you recorded and then how many are you at like kind of that mixing mastering stage mm, okay so i've probably made like and this is just a rough estimate right i've probably made at least 30 or more beats right um and 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 honestly i could have made more you know what i'm yeah. saying but like you know truth be told being completely transparent i'm not a perfect human being and you know, as I told you, in the process of doing rapid fire, uh, I went through some pivotal change. Pivotal, 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 pivotal. Piv I'm sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. There I went is. through some major. I went through some major changes in my life, and you know, even in the process of uh, rapid fire, man, I, I've experienced some really harsh tragedies in my family. Yeah. Um, So I've been a little slow in, you know, I've slowed down here and there, but you know, that's just life, you know, um, it's no excuse. Um, I'm not trying to make excuses, but that's just the way things panned out. I'm only human, but you know, I try to pick myself back up, keep moving forward. So, you know, in a perfect world where I can give a hundred percent of my time to music with the information that you've given me, I could have made a hundred beats. You sure. know what I mean? But the point well, I'm the trying cool to thing make... is you have the skills now, so it doesn't matter. I mean, the past is the past. It's already over with. Yeah. And if you look at your present moment now compared to where you were before, right? You Before that, you were buying beats. How much were you spending per beat? Um, On the low, low, and this was rare, like 50 bucks on the low, low, on the low, low. But on average, between $100, $150, $200 a beat, you know? Okay, so like let's just say a hundred. So you made thirty beats. That's wait, I'm really bad. You yeah, made yeah, how many? Thirty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thirty times a hundred. Wow. It's like okay. 3, <laughs> so that's you're making back three k off that alone, yeah. and you own the rights to it. And then so you've made thirty beats. How many songs have you? Not just not written, but I want to know recorded to your beats. In in, actually, no, it doesn't matter to your beats because you you had a couple of beats coming into the program. Yeah, yeah, and I also How many wanna, you yeah. I want to speak on that real quick too because it's like any song I make or I've made after Rapid Fire, I attribute it to as part of my success of for, as part of the success I've gained or what I've gained from this program. And let me explain why, right? Because whether, 
Because, bro, I'm an artist. So, like, you know, coming into this, of course, I had a million songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I've been doing this, right? But, like, I didn't always have the ability to create, restructure, mix, master at the rate that I can now because of Rapid Fire. Mm. So every song, literally, that I've worked on, whether it was over produced beats by myself or whether it was beats I already had, I am taking elements of Rapid Fire Mm -hmm. and I am implementing all of them into every song because you have only given me way more tools, way more knowledge, and way more ability. So why wouldn't I use all of that to make everything I have way better? So everything I've ever done after that, the quality of it, where it's at now, and how much I've grown is only attributed to the time I've spent in rapid fire, straight up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know... Exactly. That's what it is, man. You know, but to answer your question more thoroughly, sure. I got about five or six tracks recorded on my own beats. Cool. That's sick. I didn't even know that. I didn't know the number. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. I'm just, you know, I'm just like, like, like they're just ideas for now. You know what I'm saying? But I have like my one major one. Um, Hamaru. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna call it though. I, I might know, keep it like but that, I'll but always like, call it that. Yeah, yeah. Cause yo, honestly, I just made that word up, but it is actually a word in Japanese, and it means addictive, and I don't really like the connotation of that. Okay, right. Fair enough. We don't you know have to say it. But like, okay, no, no, so cool. I just you, said it because it, it sounded cool to me, and, and and I like Japanese culture. I like anime. So like, you know, well, I always categorize. I always say this. Like, I always warn people that you will become addicted to making beats. Is like a little cute joke. And like music can be addictive. So I don't know necessarily if the name of the song is bad. Yeah. You know what it is? It's just the song is literally. All right. That song is literally the definition of the aftermath of me being in rapid fire. Mm -hmm. Like that song is way more than just a song to me. It's way more than just like, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, every song is every song. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to be a hit, you know, whatever. But whatever, man. Honestly, I'm not really trying to chase hits. I'm just being honest with you. I just like making music that I like. I'm putting it out there. I'm very confident in my ability. You fuck with it. You fuck with it. You don't. It's okay. It's a free country or wherever you're at. Your ears are your ears (laughs) to each his own, right? Right. But like what I'm trying to say is like. Love that song. So my bad. I got us off track. Five recorded songs. So 30 beats, five recorded songs. How many have we are in the mixing mastering realm? Um, well, Hamaru, Hamaru's done. Hamaru's done. So that's one completed song. Hamaru's done. Every, everything else is just like in like a mixing phase. And honestly, they're even in phases where like they're mixed, but like they're even in phases where like they're mixed so that I could just kind of like hear what they sound like. And... Then as I listen to them throughout my day, I'm getting ideas on like where I want to change things, if I want to change things. That's another thing that I learned in Rapid Fire, which we should talk about, right? Which is um, Rapid Fire taught me to not be so, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? To not be so like paranoid about like certain things with music. Okay. It's okay, it's okay to just change things like you don't have to keep everything you write it doesn't have to be the final draft the first like when you write it it's not gonna it's not like the ten commandments bro it's not like you wrote it down and that's it it's set in stone forever you know like you can change things and i have the ability to change things you know and that i often should be listening to my own music and be like how can i make this better you know what i mean Mm because like sometimes sometimes you nail it on the first try sometimes and sometimes you list after listening to it a couple of times, you're like, man, you got to be honest with yourself. Like, I think I could do better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so like, I've been pushed to do, do that. Like, you, you hear that, like when you do the calls and you're doing things like, um, you know, live music workshop sessions, working on someone's song, you know, like sometimes they have to, oftentimes they have to be okay with 
changes that maybe they didn't originally intend. And you got to be open minded to that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like I remember when we were in a call with Carlos and I remember like he felt a little uncomfortable about singing or reciting something that he didn't write. And I remember you were like, you yeah. were like, fuck it, bro. Like, so what if you didn't write it? You know what I'm saying? You're like, that doesn't make you any less of an artist. Like you're writing majority of the song. You're just getting a little assistance from the community. And that's what part of being a community is. We're, we're helping each other make the songs better. Maybe you're introducing, you know, maybe someone else is introducing you to an idea that you didn't, you wouldn't originally have had. Right. You know? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> what up, Jules? I like that guy from Mortal Kombat. Oh, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah so. Okay, so for people who don't know, this is, if you can't know, this is Anthony's twin brother, Julian. Yes. He's Very my twin, excited. My partner in crime. He's the other half to Straw Hat Dynasty. We're a twin breakdancing rap duo. Oh, let's do it for them real quick. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Yo, what up, everybody? I'm Trix the Hooligan. And I'm Jules the Buddha Mom. And we are <laughs> Straw Hat Dynasty. Dynasty. Your favorite rapping breaking twins from NYC. NYC. Oh, my God. That's fucking sick. Hey, yeah. that's fucking dope. <laughs> Julian, okay. question for you mm. is when Anthony came to on the call, right? He was like, hey, I have a twin brother. We share a bank account. I got to chop it up with him first. I was like, that's valid. What the fuck were y'all talking about? And then what was it that made you, I mean, made Anthony decide to like come through and join this? Join this program? The Rapid Fire Music Academy. Yeah. Uh, I actually stumbled upon you first. I saw one of your <laughs> okay. uh, Instagram ads where you were just basically the first line just spoke to me like, yo, do you want to make a living off of making music? That was pretty much like the first thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> right and i was like i want to make a living off of making music right and then you know i just started from there I was like, oh there may be something to this i'm not sure if i liked it or left a comment or something we followed him oh probably followed you but yeah. i know that i did something from our probably from the straw hat account and then you dm'd us and then he answered the dm okay he, he sent us the voice note and then i answered yeah so that's how it happened yeah fuck yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so like he said, he said, what, what was going on in your head when we were talking about like making after the call? So after my oh. first call with Anthony, where I, where, you know, we, you, he was like, uh, hey, I mean, yeah. you know, at the time in life, a lot of things were going on. We were about to go to Puerto Rico and, uh, I guess I was just really thinking monetarily. I was thinking about the money we had and what we could use it for, what we had to spare or whatever. And then, uh, you know, these pressures that a lot of people deal with when deciding to heavily invest into themselves and all these things pop up, you know, you, no offense, but before I knew you, like, what if this is a scam? What if it's not worth it? What if uh, blah, 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 this and that, this and that, because there's so, coaching programs are like, you know, you see them all the time, right? Yeah. But we used, uh, we used our instincts, mine plus his, and a lot of times if I, I'm not able to use mine, He'll use his, and I just trust that his are are valid. Vice versa. So, you know, I was like, "Fuck it!" Like, um, you know, we're not really in a different spot than we were before, and we really don't have any answers right now for half the things we're doing. So, we'll 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 go ahead and we'll take this calculated risk. And if it turns out to not be what we needed or what it's intended to do, we'll just figure some other ish out because that's pretty much like the theme of our life. So <laughs> that's what was going on. But, you know, I, oh, I did, I did, I did think, you know, once, once we paid for it, I did think, you know, our motivations for making it work were pretty much there. All right, we paid for it. That's it. We have no choice. Let's make it work now. Let's make it work because we paid for it. As opposed to like when you try to get knowledge for free, you maybe you get a little motivated, but you're not, you don't have that determination because right. there's nothing holding you accountable. You're like, I, right, you know, I'm still doing it. Oh, look, look at all the other free videos and blah, 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 blah. But as we soon figure it out, when you pay for something, you get to the answer a hell of a lot quicker than if you try to teach it by yourself. 
Yeah. I mean, those who pay, pay attention. It's simple as that. And the more you pay, the more you pay attention. That's a bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, exactly. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously Julian, you're a huge influence. You're fucking twins, right? Anthony has been the one who's kind of taken steam in the program. And, 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 and so, but it was still cool that I know you were su- such a big part of the decision. And so I want to know, you obviously we have this like behind the scenes story where you went and joined a program that a friend of mine has and then anthony was influencing you can you just share like just such a, such a funny story i just want you to share like how that all happened oh, okay so basically the same thing happened to me where i saw an ad on instagram <laughs> i believe it was instagram was it yep. instagram oh no it could have been a youtube short i'm not sure with a, a similar kind of vibe like yo you know like like are you sick of like working this nine to five life do you feel like you want to like become financially free and like do you basically he's like he's like, i'm gonna show you how to make a full-time living just making youtube videos right and then i was like hmm i want to do that right and i was like i want to do that because i figured if i can just cover all my monthly expenses with a youtube channel then it would free up a lot more time and i, I would be super super in the zone to just go all in on music doesn't mean yeah. i'm gonna wait until i get to that point but i thought might as well that could be a good stepping stone it's in line with what we want to do too yeah yeah and, of course you know, it's and, creating content it's fun yeah so you know what's wrong with what's wrong with having a dope youtube channel nothing <laughs> so um i joined the program and you know it was the same kind of thing i had to like search my feelings and it was a different thing too though like it was this the same the same situation as before but vice versa so it's like now he's coming to me to kind of validate hey should we pay for this you know what I'm yeah saying? and i went to him and he asked me what i thought and i said well my instincts tell me this is a good thing you know like i had a consultation call with the guy he seemed pretty genuine whatever uh i saw you know i heard from a couple of his students, blah, 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 blah. And again, I was like, you know, nothing really changed. Like, it's still a calculated risk. And I was like, hey, you know, we felt the same way with Anthony and he made it work. So I was right. like, you know, why can't I do the same with this one? You know, I'm still taking the same risk as before. And I saw what would what happened firsthand when you paid for that knowledge and guidance. And I was like, it could happen again with me in this. And then you know um when i got to talking to my my new coach that's when we discovered that uh he was friends with you i said my brother joined the coaching program too but for making music for making beats and stuff he's like yeah who who is it and i'm like it's a guy named lisa he's like oh yo that's my boy i was just talking on the phone with him yesterday i was like oh snap <laughs> that's, that's how that happened yeah yeah, yeah. Hilarious. yeah and now you know um now our youtube channel has grown tremendously honestly totally. in, in a month we're we're almost at ten thousand well, subscribe two months well it's about to be two months in like two days really yeah a we month started and a half? february 1st we started we did yes the oh, first shit. video was published february 1st i didn't know i'm that. gonna i'm gonna share my screen i've never done this on like a client testimonial but i'm just gonna look at this yeah you just click on the channel you might want to pause that sick channel it, it's it's like I'm already subscribed, of course. It's it's really cool what you guys are doing, right? Because it's so organic to you guys. Like, I mean, I've watched a few of your videos and I'm like, it's really just these these dudes are being themselves. They're being themselves, they're talking about something they love, which is music. And it's entertaining and it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fun. A lot of the times getting into these content creation spaces and for sure for me and my space with coaching, um, man, it's really hard because there's a lot of inauthentic people. They're really trying to push something or they're trying to be something and it, it's it's really hard. But when you can just be yourself, which you guys, I think, have done a fantastic job of doing, it really helps. Like you could do anything. You could react to videos. You could be teaching people music production. As long as you're just authentically you and you're unapologetically you, you you know, you usually do pretty well with whatever it is you're choosing to do. What do you guys feel like has been the big, uh, big reason for your success here on YouTube? Um, a one is a heavy work ethic. Two is 
uh, just experience in life up until now. We're 33 years old and we've like restarted our life from scratch or at least, you know, like quit this job and start a new one and then quit this one, start a new one. We've done it a couple of times already. So that fear of like starting something new is not as crazy. So because we have proof of concept that we can do it, we can learn something new and we can make it work that and uh and a killer thumbnail and yeah and a killer thumbnail no no but that 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 involves the third thing is um just following following the instruction of whatever mentor we choose to the t as soon as it is given to us okay. i show my i show my mentor my thumbnails and my titles before i even post my stuff and right away he's like okay this is cool but change this change this change that and then he'll give me a reason for why I'm doing it, just so I understand why. And then every single time, it gets better to the point where a lot of times he'll just look at it. Now he'll look at it like my thumbnail and be like, yeah, this is fire. This is good. You know, before he used to tell me to change this, change that, change this. So it's just experience of where, uh, where we are up until now, a heavy work ethic and not questioning the mentorship that we paid for. We just do it right then and there, right away. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. I'm so, so glad Julian, you could come in and join this too. Like this was, this made the video better. And so to kind of close things off, um, let's say someone's like, they just booked a call with me. They're about to, you know, they're in that process of they booked the call and they're going to have it in like a day or a couple of days. And they're trying to fucking figure out like, is Rapid Fire Music Academy the right fit for me? Am I going to get results? What would you guys have to say to him? I would say this. I would say, where, where do you see yourself right now? Right? Where do you see yourself like right now? Where are you right now? Ask yourself that question, you know? Have you been there for a while? You know what I mean? Are things already moving super fast for you? You know, at least in the music production aspect or in music in general, right? If the answer is no, and I'm not saying that that's your situation, but a lot of the times, you know what I mean? That That is the situation, you know? Yeah. Um. If the answer is, man, I have not seen the change or gain the confidence that I really want from making my own music mm. and seeing results, then you need to question, do you really want to, are, are you someone who really wants to, are you really someone who wants to make a, uh, yeah, hold on a second. are you mm. really someone who wants to, to get to, are you really someone who wants to, to gain success in what you're doing? Or are you all just talk? You know what I'm saying? Like if you're someone who really wants that success, you have to make the investments into yourself and you have to take chances and roll the dice. Nobody ever got successful playing it super safe, you know? So like, I would say, if you really wanna see the change and roll in the program, take the chance and once you're in the program, take it seriously, because I've seen people come into the program and then disappear. So, and I know it costs a couple, you know, it costs some money to get into this program. So it's like, they literally just spent their money and are just like- Buried right. their head in the sand is what I've been saying. Yeah. And it's just like, mm. then it's like, it's like, all right, so you really didn't want this. You know what I mean? I would say, I will, I will agree with my brother on, look at where you're at right now and then think about where you want to be. And then think about how long have you been where you're at right now? If the answer is like too long, if you've been there for a long time and you haven't seen as much growth or your growth is really slow, now let's fast forward to this program that you offer, right? Where the goals is if you want to basically learn how to make your own music, um, record your own music and just produce a higher better quality product of music Some, well, something that sounds professional that it can be heard on the radio or in the club 
or any environment where it sounds like this sounds like this person's already famous, if you want that level of quality in a super short time, I would say in like a month max, right? Because I saw what happens when somebody who applies himself actually follows the steps in the program. And I, I'll say realistically two months just for like, cause I came in with some skills to be honest with you, but two months, you'll definitely see a great improvement in the product and what you're producing. And you'll definitely understand the concepts you need yep. to produce a great product, which I discussed earlier in the video, I believe is the most important key, understanding the concept. I'm gonna bring it back down to one month because I think that if you, even from scratch, if you just do what your mentor is telling you to do in this program, yeah, and you put at least an hour minimum, but I'm going to say like two to three, if you really want it, a day into yeah, the program in a month, there's no yeah. way you're not going to be able to get to that quality of music. And then that's just the first month. I know this 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 program spans like like a couple months. Three so, months, yeah. Three months. So if you can knock out that first month of just learning the skill and getting the quality, the next two can be built on perfecting it and yeah, the other aspects that go along re with it. Realistically speaking, if you go hard, like if you treat this like you like it's school because that's what it is, really yeah. it's just like but it's more fun. education. Yeah, yeah, it's an education. If you treat this like you treated your college education, your high school education, if you were a good student, right? Well, more well, like college because <laughs> high school is free. You got to remember that okay. most of the time. Yeah. So like think about college, right? You wasn't fucking around in college like you was in high school. Yeah. At least not as much. Maybe you were, but not as much, or at least maybe Different. not in the beginning. You move away was, or like you have to get to class. Like your shit is- No, it was your money or it was your parents' money or it was the government's money. Whatever the situation was, it was money involved. And because there was money involved, it made you take it at least a little bit more seriously. You know, you was handing your well, homework in. Well, well, here's the thing. You know, the, you was doing this shit. Here's the deal though. Fuck college and all that well, shit. That's what because, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? This is yeah. my, my concept yeah. is yeah. this. Because, because this now is... Hold on, hold on. Fuck college and all that shit because you're just giving money to fucking in. This uh, is not about... That's not the point of all, what I'm trying to all say. All I'm trying though. to say is if you take yourself seriously, if you love yourself, right? Let's talk about self-love real quick. Just real quick, not to be cheesy or corny, right? But self-love, I believe, is doing what's good for you even when you don't feel like doing it because yeah. you love yourself enough to know that this is what's right for you. You know what I'm saying? And self-love isn't like, oh, I'm fucking feeling down, so I'm going to eat this cupcake or, oh, right. you know, I, I don't feel good, so I'm going to go binge the, the new season of this on Netflix. That's not self-love. That's being selfish with yourself. All right? There's a difference between self-love and being selfish with yourself. So if you love yourself, do what's right by you. Do what you know in the long run is going to produce real happiness for you, right? And that's what I'll tell you. Just think about it like this. Be like, hey, you know, this is this is work. But like, am, am I not always feel like doing this work? Mm -hmm. Because not every aspect is super glorious of learning the skills you need to get to where you need to get to. But if you love yourself, if you really love yourself and you really want the best for your life, you will do what's best for yourself even when you wake up on that day and you're like, damn, I don't feel like doing this. And that correlates with discipline. The idea of discipline, which is to sacrifice a momentary pleasure for a long-term fulfillment. That's all it is. So if you want to, you want that long-term fulfillment in making a quality, uh, making quality music, making your own beats and having it sound to a professional level and then taking it further beyond in that case. And you want to do it in a short amount of time. If you have that, if you feel like you really want it and you feel like you're going to have that level of discipline, then yes, join the program. I would say join the program because think about where you're at right now and how long you've been there. And that's all I have to say. Fucking love it. Guys, thank you so much for this. Uh, Julian, thank you for jumping in. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> you guys are super awesome. Um, thank you so much, right? Obviously, share really quick too where we can find you guys on Instagram and YouTube. Okay, you can find us on Instagram and YouTube at Straw Hat Dynasty, spelled exactly how it's supposed to be spelled, Straw Hat Dynasty. And uh, yeah, you can find us there pretty much on almost everything. Except and on TikTok, we're Straw Hat Twins with a Z yep. instead mm. of S at the end. Yep. 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 So, you know, that's us on, on those platforms. Uh, follow us and keep up with what we're doing. You know, we're doing a lot of cool stuff. 
um, the second, um, in the next quarter and so on throughout the year, we will be really just unleashing a lot of music of high quality and a lot more original beats uh, with our music on it. And we're excited to just kind of start intertwining uh and, and we've been building up the youtube channel so we're really excited to see what happens when we take the youtube channel and then go back to like being content beast monsters and combining it with the music and i want to try to see where this takes us you know fuck yeah guys thank you so much for your time today really really appreciate it i'll see you tonight on the group call all right yo hell yeah peace. see you guys peace